man. Even when you thought you got rid of me, here I am, popping up with the substitute. You just can't keep a weir down or hidden for too long. Well, I decided that you guys were just too much to handle for a week, so I've decided to take a few days off. You know, a month with you has been tough. Tough, 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 tough. I'm on sick leave, so I'm going to be in bed all day. But regardless of what I'm doing... I am here at this very moment to make sure that you guys get a good quality education because you know how I am all about that. So, I want you guys to pull out your salt crystal lab. I want you to go on the back and I want you to observe your crystals and other people's crystals, but the only crystals that you can touch are your own. No touching anybody else's. Okay, take a look at them. Observe what happened. Lift up the plate now. Look underneath the plate. Did anything happen there? Look on the sides of the plate. Look in the cracks of the plate. What has happened to your salt crystal lab? Okay, and then you're going to be descriptive on your observations. I do not want you to put down that I have salt. That's a no-no. So I'm going to go ahead and give you, oh, about four minutes to do that. Well, get going. Sub, you can pause it right here. Okay, the first thing we want to do real quick is to just review a few things. First of all, in order for a mineral to be a mineral, according to geologists, it first of all needs to be a naturally occurring, not man-made. It's got to be inorganic. It's got to be made out of elements or compounds of elements. It must be a solid, therefore water cannot be a mineral. It has, and it has to have a definite structure and composition. It's got to be made out of specific things um, that are identifiable, and the crystal structure is going to be definite. Remember that inorganic means not made from living things, and then also we want to make sure that you understand the word crystalline. Um, crystalline is those atoms that are arranged in specific patterns that are repeated. Just like your salt crystal lab, you will notice that the labs that turned out great are the ones that have big salt crystals. They formed in specific patterns, and they should all be cubical or cubed. The other thing I want to remind you as well is that crystals tend to run together if they lack space. Okay, so the bigger the crystal, the more space it actually had to grow into. And then also time. The bigger, the longer the time, the bigger those crystals can actually get. Minerals form in a few ways. Number one is that cooling magma or lava The slower the cooling rate, the larger the crystals will be. For example, granite and basalt. Okay, so what we can see here is a piece of granite. What you're looking at is a bunch of different minerals. You've got some black minerals. It's biotype mica. You've got minerals that are a little bit white and pink. Your pinks are your potassium feldspar. Your whites are your quartz. And these minerals had time and space to grow, and they just kind of grew into each other. But that allowed the rock to look the way it does. This rock is similar to granite in that it also had time to grow. You can see the quartz crystals in here as well as the biotype mica. Just the different minerals make up a different colored rock. This mineral, you can see the crystals are a little bit smaller. And the reason that's the case is simply because it cooled off much quicker than the other two. You still have biotype mica, you have quartz, you're missing the potassium feldspar. Let's put them both together. Now you can see the difference. On the left I've got bigger crystals and on the right I've got smaller crystals and that is simply just because of the time, relative time frame to which they cooled. Now let's take a look at some volcanic glass. You can see that it cooled off so quickly that minerals didn't have any time whatsoever to form. If I were to take a thin slice of this volcanic glass and made it microscopic, I would see similar crystals. Minerals from 
can be formed from dissolved that are dissolved in liquids just like your salt crystals were these are called evaporites where the water evaporates leaving behind the crystals atoms in these minerals stay behind and they form these crystals um, ancient lakes are a good place to find um, evaporites here's one of the salt crystals that grew into a nice big cube and what we're going to try to do is actually zoom in on it and you should be able to see now many many smaller cubes that are actually attached to it this is an evaporite where the water evaporated in a very thick solution of salt water and the crystals had space and time to grow precipitates solution what happens with the precipitate um, your solution becomes saturated with minerals and it can precipitate out of the solution and we also kind of proved that with your salt crystal lab okay so this is one of those plates zoomed in a little bit you can actually see the salt solution creeping up the sides of the plate forming these nice cauliflower looking things that's called precipitation there's precipitation on the outer ring of the plate just a zoomed out version we're going to flip the plate over you can actually see that the minerals actually precipitated out of uh, the solution through the plate and everything else and this whole bottom of this plate even though it's kind of hard to see is filled with tiny tiny salt crystals here we have a geode used to be part of a rock layer something that had a hollow section when we flip it over you can see that the minerals actually precipitated out and into the rock 98% of the Earth's crust is made up of only about eight common elements. There's 4,000 minerals, but only a few dozen that are actually common. Most of the common minerals are in a group called silicates. So most minerals that you find will actually have some sort of silicon and oxygen in usually one or more other elements. So you take the silicon and you take the oxygen and then add a few elements to it and you get different minerals and you get different arrangements of how those mineral crystals form. The most abundant elements on earth out of those out of the periodic table are oxygen, silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, sodium, potassium and magnesium and all of those combined in different amounts and different combinations give you many 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 different minerals that we can find talking about the periodic table it's actually important that you understand the periodic table so we need to pause the video here real quick while the substitute or my aide passes out the colored periodic table of elements now what you'll notice on this is that the periodic table is actually colored and that's because elements are grouped into many different things mostly metals non-metals gases and we're mostly per mostly interested in whether a mineral is is going to have an element that is a metal or non-metal or gases which most of them fall into this place so your assignment today you're going to need to know that so when you look at for example the light blue on the right side all of those are are noble gases okay you will also notice a lot of these other things like iron cobalt these are going to be your metals lithium all of this whole group right in here is going to be your metals. You have a few non-metals right here. And so what you're going to do is we're going to have you find using the internet a bunch of different uh, a bunch of different minerals. Okay, 10 10 minerals to be exact. And what you'll do with those is I want you to find out what they're made out of. Okay, so what you're going to do, and I've already done the first one for you, is I want you to go to the internet, and I've got a couple links that might help you out. You can go to the internet, and you're going to look up, say, quartz, and you're going to find the chemical makeup, all the elements that it's made out of. Okay, 
you're going to identify the metals then you're going to identify any non-metals that might be in that element and then I want you to Google what could they use quartz for give me uh, one commercial use that they might use this mineral for and that's really all you're doing you're just going to identify these ten you need to work on your own or with people at your table okay so this video is pretty much concluded just get on your assignment and know that you should be able to accomplish this in a day if it rolls over the next day and if the substitute says you guys worked hard then that is fine to continue working on it a little bit tomorrow so be prepared when I get back to discuss some of those elements and some of the minerals that you have discovered and we'll find out what they're used for in real real life have a good day